Well, thank you everybody for joining. Uh, my name is Agustin Benito, and I'm going to be presenting uh, the state of art of uh, the Geneva Development Platform together with uh, uh, two engineers that I work with on a weekly or daily basis, Shang-Yong Bai, who is a maintainer, one of the three maintainers of GDP. Uh, he, he does this work in, on his personal time, although he works for LG Electronics. And one contributor to the project, which in this case is Leon and Avi, that uh, will help us uh, on the delivery side by testing and, and also has a particular contribution that he will talk about at the end of the, of the talk. Yes, yeah, so let me start by, by saying just a few words about Genevi, which is a consortium that, uh, automotive consortium with more than 140 companies that uh, will host the project, okay? Um, and the mission basically is to drive open source into IBI system and into the, the automotive industry in general. Mm, basically, Genevi does five things. Development, development of uh, automotive-specific software components, uh, what some people call middleware, but also some, some other parts of, of, of one IBI system, and then also trying to go a little bit beyond the IBI system with uh, software that relates directly or connects or has a direct relation with IBI. Then the delivery side of, of, of Genevi tries to develop systems that people can use with different target audiences. Um, Genevi has a, an important part, which are specs. This is an industry driven by specs. And also, there is a compliance program and a certification program. The fourth thing is, uh, well, promoting open source development among the, the members and in general in the industry. And they organize quite a few activities and events to promote uh, the Genevi code, uh, the specification, the compliance program, and in general, open source. Uh, this picture is an IBI, oops, an IBI system, right? And you see there are tons of little boxes. So, um, well, this is what er every single company in this business has to basically provide. Uh, in an IVI. So what Geneva is trying to do is make sure that it is an uh, open source alternative for each one of those boxes. Some of them are just extensions of a standard open source code, and some others need to be developed specifically for the car. So we're going to talk a little about the delivery side of things of Geneva. And, uh, there are basically three derivables or outcomes of uh, that Genevi produces. Baseline, which is, uh, is formed by uh, specific automotive components that comes out of the compliance program. The compliance program has as a root the specifications. So it's the first root of uh, way of producing software in Genevi from specs to uh, proof of concepts to uh, maturity of components that goes into production. Uh, and goes through the compliance process. Uh, there are basically two. One produced with Yocto, the other one produced with Base Rock. Then there is uh, the second outcome, which is we call it master. It's nothing but a rolling release. Uh, we will talk a little bit uh, more. And finally, GDP is the most well known because it's targeting application developers. And uh, well, it's what we are going to show here. And there are two more initiatives that next week in, in the Geneva members event uh, will be presented. One of them is, uh, in fact, we put here SDK, but it's more an SDE, uh, software development environment. Try to reduce the amount of effort that a developer has to put to produce applications for, or develop applications uh, for this system. And the second one is what we are calling GDP spins for now, which are basically companies or people that uh, produce systems uh, using GDP as a base, targeting a specific audiences. Next week, there will be presented one targeting Qt developers. So we're going to talk specifically about two, which are the ones we are working on. The first one is master, is the rolling release. Master is where the collaboration takes place. Uh, there are most of the collaboration that we do in, in the delivery side of Genevi. Uh, 
we try, it's the integration, the central integration point. So all the new software goes there. It gets integrated there, tested there, and available there for those of you who knows uh, how to build the uh, systems with Yocto. So if you know how to do that, you go to master, and uh, through some configurations, you decide which parts of master you want to build into your system and for which boards. Uh, or if you want QEMU. So you just build it and touch a few configuration files and build it and you have, there you have it, the latest software that we are producing right there. And obviously targets people that are interested in automotive systems and knows how to work with Yocto. Um, and uh, it's based on Pokey, that's, that's an important point. And we have there uh, two main repos, uh, so when you get the slides, you will be able to... I think Leon is going to show one of them. So all our repos are in GitHub. Everything is there. So there are two main repos that we work with. And then we have GDP. GDP is the... Uh, out of that uh, software that is integrated, we take most of it and we produce binaries. And we work, uh, we work them out in a way that they are very easy to consume. So basically, this, the experience you get with this system is this, the same experience you get with any Linux system in your laptop. You just, uh, in this case, did a, make a DD on a SD card, plug it in, it boots, and it works. That's uh, the goal. And right now, we have uh, GDP working for several boards and also, obviously, for QEMU. So, we try, uh, it goes through a stabilization phase to make sure that that experience is possible, which is not always possible with up-to-date, uh, with very new software that is recently integrated uh, in master. So this is for more conservative users, and especially we try to make sure that people, the people that consume these images do not need to know anything related with Yocto, in the same way that in a, distribu in a normal distribution, you don't need to know anything about packaging to consume a Linux uh, desktop uh, nowadays. Well, what we talk about GDPs, Geneva Development Platform, uh, and I think one of the, throughout the journey of this last year, one of the key points for us, for everybody that is working behind a project, was to make sure that this is a project that uh, follows all the standards of any open source project out there. So we put quite a lot of effort at the beginning of the project to make sure that that was a reality. Uh, I would like to say thank you for the organizers of uh, ELC, because uh, it's the second time that we come here. The first one was in, in, in the US, and back then we were nothing but, uh, but um, uh, an interesting future pro open source project, right? So they, they made a bet by bringing us uh, back then, and now it's a reality, so we are very happy to be able to, not just to talk about the reality of the project, that you can go and check by yourself, obviously, but also uh, to show actual software that is working. So GDP is based on master. So we take a master, we make a snapshot of the software we want, and then we build it, we go through a stabilization phase, a lot of testing on hardware, and, uh, and we ship it, we release it. The current stable version is uh, uh, the ninth version, um, which was released back in spring. And currently we have, what we are going to show is the new one, it's a release candidate two of the new GDP 11. The numbering, uh, is related with Meta IBI, which I show on the slides before, is the outcome of the compliance process program. So it, it has nothing to do with, there is no GDP 10, let's say. Um, yes, and what has GDP on it? What is, when we talk about GDP, we make a block diagram to, so it's easier to understand. And I will go through it very, very quickly, because at the very end, what we want is to show the software. So we have obviously the, the hardware, then the BSP comes with the kernel and the drivers and the firmware. So depending on which board we select, this is proprietary or less proprietary, right? Raspberry Pi is less proprietary or even open, depending on which component we are talking about compared to others. 
Then we have an important layer is the meta-IBI. So most of the automotive-specific software components developed by Genevi are included in this meta-IBI layer. So obviously, we have uh, a base Linux system here, right, uh, based on Yocto. And then on top of that, we have obviously Qt, and then some other uh, automotive-specific components that haven't gone through the compliance program. But still, some of them are proof of concept. Some of them are partly mature. Some of them are mature. Some of them are in production. It depends. They are mostly maintained by OEMs and Taiwans. And then uh, we have here uh, some proof of concepts and QML uh, examples. The ones that we're going to show in RC2 are the old ones, the ones that comes from last year. And next week, we will be presenting the, the new ones. The CEO of Geneva will be presenting them. And obviously, I was not going to be a spoiler. You know, if you want to be friend of the CEO, you don't do that. So I am not going to show them today uh, for good reasons. And then I talked about before the SDK, which is also new. It's going to be new next week. So the, the slide is up to date. Uh, I said before that we, we, we follow every standard of any open source project, and that means that people goes first. And we have three maintainers. Uh, two of them work for CodeThink, like myself, and then Shang Yong, who's here, uh, is the third one. And then we have contributors and testers, like Leon and some others. On the development side, Geneva is organized on expert groups. And then also, depending on the, the software, there are external people taking care of that software that lands on GDP. So you have some software that go, goes from spec to compliance, some of them even to certification. And there is a second way to get software within Geneva, which is from outside. You go directly to master, then end up in GDP. And from there, some software end up also getting into compliance and specs. Okay, so we try, so yeah, the open source way code first, and you have the spec way, the traditional automotive way. And then there are other teams uh, that are related directly or indirectly with other people with the GDP from the LR team, the license review team. Obviously, we have a PMO office, and yeah, there are maintainers of the BSPs. Uh, for instance, I don't know, Renesas, for instance, there is Stephen works, spend a lot of time in Geneva making sure that whatever we produce works for Renaissance boards. And then we have a community manager. And obviously, we need services nowadays and IT services for producing the software. And yeah, one of the last points, we also use some tools for producing all this. Nothing that, nothing fancy here. We are, again, a very standard open source project in that regard. And I'm going to hand it. To 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 Shangyong to we let me explain first the setup. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have there a Raspberry Pi three with a uh, seven inch touchscreen, the new the new one the, from the the foundation, and connected to a battery, and he's just gonna boot it and serial cable. The SD card has a plain uh, GDP eleven release candidate too, so download it. DD into the SD card, and that's it. No, no magic, no demo, whatever. Just plain uh, image. And he's booting it. And what it's going to show in a few seconds is the, the old HMI with some demos, uh, QML demos that basically show some functionality. Very, very, very simple. Again, next week we will have the new ones. And he will get with the serial port into the system and show that it's nothing but a Linux system with some asteroids, automotive asteroids. OK, go ahead. Yeah. Hello. Uh, this is, I'm Chang Hyuk, and I am one of the maintainer on the GDP. So actually, I am working for the LG Electronics. This is the console. Now I put the Raspberry Pi 3 with the Xenobi development platform. So actually, you can see the serial the message that we connect with the Raspberry Pi 3 and the, this laptop. 
So here, here is system D. Actually, we are GDP is using the system D and also Raspberry Pi 3. Our the GDP, current GDP is using the Yocto based build system. The you know the who is the familiar with the Yocto? Raise your hand. Oh, very good. Yeah, uh, we are supporting the many uh, device like uh, Raspberry Pi 3 and the Dragon Board and NASA Porter, uh, Intel Miniboot and Max and Turbo. So because of the, we are using Yocto, then we can support uh, many devices. So I log in here. Yeah. Then currently we are using the kernel 4.4.16. Because this, the Raspberry Pi 3 uh, touch screen, and using is using the DSI interface. DSI is the dis, uh, display serial interface, and we also using the DRM, the Direct Rendering Manager. So before one or one month ago, the Raspberry Pi 3 kernel doesn't support the DSI interface with the DRM. But however, now on the in the Kernel 4.4.16, the DSI is supported, so currently we are using this. I said the GDP is using the DRM, and in the Raspberry Pi, DRM is the VC4, which is supported by the Broadcom. And so our compositor is the... Uh, It's an English keyboard, so <laughs> for him it's new. Yeah, we are using the Western compositor. It means the our compositor is the working through the weight end. And also the Genovi is supported the Genovi's own weight end weight end. We call weight end shell. We call the IVI shell. Weight end IVI shell. The I thought uh, I remember the Genovi uh, wherein the IVI shell is the merged into the Qt official version in 5.7. So we are using the Western and wherein compositor. So then our I will show just demonstration. I'm very sorry to the very small. This, uh, this screen, can you see? Oh no, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Just we, press the button. <laughs> yeah, we have several HMI applications and the application and media, media and browser and the audio. The, if I click the audio manager, this is the audio test monitors. It means that there are Many audio sound in the car. You can sometimes you can see the you can listen the call or listen the music and other something. Then we can control the music or car, cars sound and call. The technology actual technology is that we are using the Pulse Audio and the con via Genovi is implement the audio manager and the GDP is also wrapper the audio manager on the audio manager demo. And also we are supporting the what, browser. The browser is using the Qt based and Qt WebKit. Currently we are using the every application with the Qt However, we have the uh, Qt version 5.6. Mm, we now we are discussing about the Qt version upgrade because, the, as you know, the Qt 5. Point, from Qt 5.7, we have the license issues. So, 
currently we are using Qt 5.6. Then in here you can just see the network, but Ethernet zero. The Raspberry Pi is supporting the Wi-Fi. However, the, this RC2 version is not integrated the Wi-Fi driver. However, the next GDP 11 official release we will support this. Yeah, uh, I think that the release candidate three already have it. Yes. Oops. This is our process list. We are using the. Yeah, this is DLT demo, which is the log managers, then we can, you can the download in DLT viewer in the Genobi website, then you can see the, this kind of uh, devices, application log on the, your laptop or the, another um, device. And also we are using the command. This is for the network manager. And HCCI is for the Bluetooth. Yeah. And upper one, is, you know that this module is for the 3G or network. The WPS applicant is for the wireless. This eight, uh, starting from the GDP prefix, there are four process. Uh, it, the HMI, HMI applications and launchers. This launcher is the demo, pro demo process. And also the node state manager is managed by some node. Node means the, each, the functions on car. Yes, now I'll explain some technologies. And yeah, go ahead, Leon. Okay. Thank you. Um, wait, just let me put you back the slides. If I have to go back, right? Okay. Uh, there was okay. that one? No. no. Okay. There we go. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Augustine and Shang Yong. Thank you very much for inviting me on stage with you. Uh, my name is Leon Onavi, and um, I'm a senior software engineer at Kansuku Group. I'm also an open source enthusiast. So I'm really happy that I'm among the people who are contributing both to a Geneva development platform and uh, automotive grade Linux. I'm here to share my experience with integrating the, the Geneva SOTA project into Geneva development platform. It's a project that has been actively developed by ADS Advanced Telematics Systems. Uh, the idea is that importing, um, updating uh, software is important and it's very hard to make users update their devices, especially if we're talking about vehicles. The sort of project is a complete suite for um, uploading, managing, queuing, transmitting, validating, and deploying software updates over the year. It contains a server which lives in the cloud and a client which is installed on the embedded devices, in our case, on the vehicles. Um, it's an open source project that lives in the Geneva GitHub repositories. It's implemented in the Rust programming language. Uh, Rust is a relatively new programming language. It's quite modern. It has a lot of advantages. And I believe because of this, it was chosen as a primary language for the implementation of the client. Uh, the SOTA client supports um, two protocols, both remote vehicle interaction and HTTPS communication based on JSON-RPC. Um, 
it is now integrated on, in both automotive uh, uh, platforms. We started in uh, April by uh, contributing it to Geneva development platform, and right now uh, we're working on the integration in automotive grade Linux. Both of the distributions are based on Yocto and Open Embedded, so our work was quite similar. Um, there is a layer called Meta Rust, and we need this uh, Yocto layer as a dependency uh, in Geneva development platform because it provides the required Yocto and open embedded recipes for building uh, the compiler of the Rust programming language and Cargo. Cargo is a uh, um, package manager for the Rust programming language in the terminology of this, uh, in the Rust uh, terminology. Uh, the packages are called crates. So using Cargo, we are installing and managing crates that we need uh, to build the Soda client. We have added um, this uh, recipe into uh, the meta layer, um, meta Geneva dev. It de deploys, uh, it builds and deploys uh, the RVI Soda client into the images that are, uh, that are built uh, with BitBake, and uh, the next step is to integrate a system that deploys the downloaded content into the system, a system such as OS3. So the repositories of um, all these projects are in GitHub. Um, here you can have a look at them. Actually, I'm not going into a deep technical dive about uh, the Soda client, just because ADS Advanced telematic systems are having a boot on the first floor, so you can go there and you can see a live demo of what I'm presenting here. Um, yep. okay. I would like to switch to, to a web browser just to show you uh, the repositories because um, I believe my experience in contributing to Geneva Development Platform is valuable and actually it's very, uh, very simple. Um, how many of you are familiar with GitHub? Okay, so you are ready to contribute to Geneva Development Platform. You, uh, this, is, this is the main repository. Um, it contains all the metal layers that uh, are required to, to build an image. So you just grab the source code, you follow the instructions, the exact steps in the Geneva Development uh, Platform wiki. Here are the steps, for example, for Raspberry Pi. The steps are quite standard if you are familiar with the Yocto project and Open Embedded. Um, here you can see the Meta Rust layer that I mentioned. It is added specifically because of RVI Soda client. One of the most important layers that we have here. Actually, there are two of them. The first is Meta IVI. The second one is Meta Geneva Dev. Let's have a look at MetaGeneV Dev. So if you um, want to do an upstream contribution to MetaGeneV Dev, this is, this is the project. Just push a standard GitHub pull request, and the, the maintainers will review it and eventually merge it. The, the upstream project of the RBI Soda client is in the Geneva repositories. Now here I'm showing you the, the downstream project of advanced telematic systems. They're doing developing here, development here. So as you can see, everything is in GitHub. And since I, I believe pretty much all of you have the knowledge how to use Git and GitHub, you are ready to become contributors. Um, if you're wondering how to get started, it's actually quite easy. Uh, there is a wiki. Augustine and uh, the, the team uh, of uh, Geneva are putting a lot of efforts, as well as some contributors like Shang Yong and me. We're trying to keep it up to date. So visit the wiki, have a look at the exact steps. If you have any questions, please uh, do not hesitate to join the mailing list and ask there, or uh, the IRC channel. From, for a community point of view, Probably Raspberry Pi is the most important target board because it is super easy to get one, to build an image in a couple of hours, and to see what we have in here. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Let's now turn again to Augustine. Yeah, thank you, Leon. I think I didn't mention before that uh, you work for a consult co company. Okay. 
Uh, let me go back to the slides before we go into the into the uh, questions. Let me just show a couple more I have prepared here. And okay, now. Uh, okay, yeah. So what we are showing here is release candidate two. So we are basically around this week. Next week is the Geneva members meeting, and. Yeah, in the members meeting, we will decide when we will release uh, the 11th one. It's, up, it's not up today because there should be here a release candidate three. In fact, it's kind of a preview of the um, new HMI and demo apps. So our late features, you know, we, we get the, the software when it comes. And some companies uh, um, has a... Uh, publish some software that we want to incorporate, so we have extended a little bit the cycle. So we are expecting, we will decide it tomorrow, but sometime before uh, Christmas to have the final release with a new layout and new uh, demo apps. They have already talked about what comes in, in, the new, in the new release. Let me just highlight some of the things we have said. Um, this is the first time we show it, by the way. So, yeah, Yocto 2.1, Qt 6, uh, 5.6, uh, you have their Meta ABI 11, uh, Wayland ABI extension. There are lots of, uh, when it comes to uh, events and big shows, we have tons of support requests about uh, Wayland ABI extension for multi monitors and things like that. And the ports, uh, it, they were mentioned before, but there are quite a few. I, I would also like to say that we have a very good uh, support for Renesas boards in master. Uh, we don't ship, um, ship them as binaries because of uh, uh, license uh, with some of the drivers, but uh, in master, we have very, very good support for Porter and Silk, and Renesas work a lot on that also. And yeah. So we have this new launcher. Next week, you will be able to see more. Hopefully, it will be recorded. And I will try to add some links about that. We have, as I said, two new deliverables or outcomes. The SDK, SDE, we call it. Uh, I found out that the, the name this week. So I, that's why I haven't updated the slides. And then this GDP slim, uh, spins. And then on the process side, uh, we are doing, obviously, we with so many boards and the system is getting bigger and bigger, then we need to look, obviously, at efficiency, doing the work that we are currently doing more efficiently. So the, the current amount of people that are working on it can handle more. So we are taking uh, steps toward acceptance testing. And uh, we are starting to try to study uh, if the contents that we are writing uh, and the critical path that somebody has to go from downloading to getting to the right instructions, uh, if that path is OK, and people are consuming the contents as we have designed it, so people don't get lost uh, looking for instructions that are right there. So we are starting to look into these kind of things to make sure that uh, we have the minimum amount of pages and goes there go to the point. So just two examples of some improvements we are doing on the delivery side of things. And yeah, above all, we are trying to get more and more focus on, on developers. And our number one activity in times like this uh, with events and is support, right? So there most we get a lot of request, support requests from, from people. That is the first time they are approaching the, an automotive system. So. It's, it consumes a lot of our time, which is a very good thing. And well, there is a link there for, uh, for the blog where we publish the, the latest news. I provide, we provide in the slides lots of links to, so you don't have to dive in too much. You go, you go directly to this uh, page and you can find almost everything we have talked about. And yeah, since we released last week, or the, no, the week before, I don't know, October 4th. Uh, the release candidate too, we welcome, we welcome some testing and questions about the system. And basically, we have about 15 more minutes, so I would like to open time for questions, and if we have some time, I will tell a few more things. Some, does anybody have a question about what I have seen? Go ahead, Hola. please.
to your car? Yeah, because, because it's, uh, my car is a, a screen and there's a screen view and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> Theoretically, I could, I could use this in my car, but... Uh, no, in practice, in practice, no, you cannot do it to your car yet. It's, we are not there yet. What, what we are trying just to do is to get, uh, to get an environment that in which you can start thinking about ap developing applications for cars, or if you are a, if you are, if you are an um, automotive uh, uh, component uh, developer, uh, then you need a system in which other, you, you can find other automotive components that they are integrated and talk to each other in order to be able to have an experience. So right now, after the first year doing this as a standard open source project, this is the goal we are having. Uh, and I think it's going to take still some time before we can really think about uh, providing something that somebody can uh, think of using in, in, in production. Uh, what, I mean, companies like, like the ones that those two guys are working for, or myself, we are also doing pro uh, projects in production. And what we are doing there is still way different than what we are doing here. Uh, may I add something? Yeah, of course. I completely understand your question because I also enjoy do-it-yourself gadgets. But the target of uh, Geneva development platform is not exactly. The use case is different. This is a platform that should uh, get, let's say, 80 or 90 percent of the, the software that should go into a, your car. And this is something that uh, manufacturers should take. They should put c customization to, to finish it like 20 percent more and then to ship it into real products. Th this is the use case. Um, it's not easy to, to grab the source code and to put it into something existing on the market, primarily because uh, you don't know what is uh, um, the, the, um, the head unit of your car. You don't know the drivers. You don't have uh, uh, the Linux kernel for it. Probably you can reverse engineer it, but it's uh, a lot of work. Eventually, one day, I'll be super happy if it's possible to grab something like things like this that Shang Yong showed us and to put it uh, into a car. But even for this, we're uh, still away, unfortunately. But Any we're going in that direction. Any other question? Go ahead, please. Okay, uh, so I'll just repeat the question. The first one, uh, I'll just paraphrase it to make it shorter. The first one is regarding Raspberry Pi. It's a hobbyist question. Is it possible uh, to access the canvas via the Raspberry Pi and additional components? Uh, this sounds as something very interesting. I have not seen it done with the Geneva Development Platform, but why not? Uh, we can give it a try as hobbyists. It, it would be a great project. Is there, is there hardware? Is there another part of Raspberry Pi? Um, yes. <laughs> I, I have seen it, I have never tried it, but yes, it's, uh, such things exist. Regarding the, the second question, it goes to me since uh, I'm uh, the one looking after the integration of the Soda client into, into Geneva development platform. Um, yes, of course, uh, the Soda client is, is designed in a way to meet the requirements of the automotive industry. Um, there are several components in the Soda client. The smart component is actually the cloud that makes the decisions what to, to download, what should be downloaded to the, to the car. 
and uh, the, the, the SODA client, written, uh, which is integrated in Geneva Development Platform and in automotive grade Linux, uh, gets the content, downloads it to the, to, the, to the vehicle, and after that, handles it to the system for system installation. Uh, in AGL, we are using uh, OS3 to, uh, to um, uh, apply the update. The, the, the benefit of OS3 is that it uh, supports incremental updates, so you can just download the static, uh, the static delta, which means that you are down downloading less information, less content, which means the download will be faster and you pay less for the traffic. And of course, uh, the roadmap includes further integration of, uh, of OS3, not only in, in automotive grade Linux, but in Geneva development platform. Um, the SODA client has further advantages because it supports uh, uh, the Dbus interface, which provides you an opportunity to communicate with the other Geneva APIs that exist in the Geneva development platform. Furthermore, it has uh, support for WebSockets, so if you are having an HTML5 application, you can directly communicate uh, to it uh, through uh, a WebSocket. Is there a talk about it, right? Is there a talk about it here? Uh, DLC? I don't think that there is a specifically talk about the SODA client, but uh, ATS uh, is having a boot uh, uh, upstairs, so please join them. Yeah, I uh, think that going to the booth, you will get all the details about the, about the SODA and, client. Uh, yeah. ju just to finish, uh, my colleague from Consalco Group, the CTO of the company, Matt Porter, had a, a brilliant talk about all the uh, different uh, open source tools for uh, up upgrades. So uh, you can reference to his slides for more details. Any other question? Go ahead. Okay, the question is if, if there are, there is an idea of using this for entertaining uh, systems. The answer is no to my knowledge. So, <laughs> Well, it's well for the entertainment. If you, let let me rephrase it, IVI also includes entertainment. It's just that we are not we are not there yet. So we are not thinking about we are thinking about enable, enabling developers, but we are still not thinking about what the developers are going to do with that. So we are not there yet. So not to my knowledge at this point. Go ahead, please. Uh, no, I, I cannot provide you details on common API because I'm not uh, into the development. We, our part is delivery integration. So from our point of view, uh, I mean, it's stable enough for us, obviously, because it's, I mean, it's one of our components used in production. So we, for the standards of some of the components that are out there, it's very, very stable. Now, if we are thinking about production, uh, I should refer that question to, to one of the developers of the expert groups. The, the good point about what I think is one of the good points about uh, um, the Geneva setup is that by asking in the public mailing list, you are also accessing to experts from tier ones and, and OEMs. I think, uh, I think that it's one of the uh, most powerful um, features that having an open source side in these big consortiums have, because otherwise it's very hard to reach the engineers and sell, right? You always have to go through a marketing product manager or something like that. And through Geneva, through the public mailing list, uh, those guys uh, answer questions about the modules they have developed. So I would refer these kind of questions to the mailing list, and if not, the, mm, my mail and contact is in the slides. Please send me an email and I will route it, okay? But we try to bring all those guys, all those developers into public mailing lists, which sometimes is not as easy as it seems because they are not used to, uh, to be exposed, right? Like we are in open source. Any other question? We have still some minutes, I think. 
Yeah, five minutes. Go ahead. Okay, so the question is, he's new to automotive and what are the difference between AGL and Geneva? Uh, basically, the OEMs that drive them. One, uh, I would say that um, AGL is a Linux Foundation project, so because you are in the Linux Foundation, you have a specific setup, right, and so and some culture. And Geneva, it's an industry consortium made with, uh, built with some rules or some processes uh, that uh, somehow resonate more to how the industry used to work or, or still works. So. The, the, the platforms today are very much alike. I mean, there are differences, but not very big. I mean, for instance, Leo is contributing to both. And in the mailing list or in the chat, Shang Yong, for instance, answers questions from basic questions that people are, are asking about AGL. Uh, because we share, we, share the same, we, share, we share the same chat. So I wouldn't say that uh, there are major differences. I have the... Obviously, if things uh, keep going as today, both of them will diverge uh, over time because the companies that are working on it and, and, and putting effort on it are different. So uh, there are some that are the same, like, like, uh, like uh, Consulco, like mine, Coding, but some others not. So I assume, I'm, in my mind, in two years, they will diverge way more than today. Mm. Uh, may, may I ask, may Let's ask uh, just a second, just a second, Leo. Uh, at the very end, Geneva, uh, when we arrived to Geneva, Geneva had already quite a lot of components. So the priority was to put those components into the hands of open source developers. And when you already have software, that, and part of that software is, is even in production, yeah, the priority is like, you know, let's put this software into the hands of, of the people because it's already open source. It's just not easy to consume. So you need to be an expert or already have a, a production system, an automotive production system to really uh, make it use of it. So very only, they were only used by, by experts from Tire Ones and, and, and OEMs. So our main goal was, no, let's, let's wrap this and let's put this software into the hands. And, and that's been the driver for this first year, I would say, or at least the first few months. And that's the first thing. And in order to do that, you have to do a lot of groundwork to make the system stable enough. Because at the very end, we are used to stand the, you know, we are used to the standard of our laptop. That's that's what we are used to. And embedded experts are used to, all, you know, going there and put a lot of instructions, and it's fine, to, you know, to spend one day or two days building something. But that's not what we want. If we want to bring this to the masses, we ha you ha the, the experience needs to be like, like in a laptop. So that's been the driver. Now, what is going to happen this second year? Well, I think that Geneva is now in a position to, to really think about, OK, now we have a system. Now what we want to do with it, where we want to point, where we want to go. And uh, obviously, there are a lot of people with several ideas. It looks like that uh, there is a strong demand for applications. So that, that, is, that is one force, very strong force. Another force is, uh, mm, let's ex if cars are going to be connected, security is one aspect. Updates is another aspect. So there is like a second force in that direction. So, but I, I cannot tell. I honestly cannot tell. I think that this event next week will, will answer some questions. I think we run out of time. We have one more minute, one more question. Time for uh, one. Can I add a small command as an, yes, en of course. As an engineer? 
So there are a lot of similarities between the two platforms. There are some differences. The similarities are that they're both uh, GNU Linux uh, distributions with using the Linux kernel, um, using systemd, using Wayland and Weston. Um, uh, they have a Qt for the HMI interfaces, for the demo HMI applications there. The difference is in, in the security and in the application frameworks as well as uh, in some of the APIs used there. So the best way to experience the best of these platforms, since they're open source, is just to grab the source code to build it. There are exact steps in both wikis and uh, to give it a try. Okay, one minute, so one more question. No, okay, thank you all, and please download it and try it and test it and let us know what you think. Thank you.